Praise the Lord. Once again, this is Brother Roger Lutz, and uh, I have some more sh uh, scripture that I'd like to share with you. And praise God for those that have been joining us and have commented on uh, the different subjects that we have brought. And trust that you'll continue to be a part of this ministry and uh, help us to reach out to touch those that that are in desperate need of a touch from God today. If you have your Bibles handy, which I trust you do, let's turn over into the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. That's 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter. And looking at verse number 1. I'm going to read several verses here, and uh, then we'll try to discuss as we go through it. It's an important uh, set of scriptures here concerning uh, the latter days, the last, the end, nearing the end of time. And in the book of Second Thessalonians uh, are some events that will precede the, the coming of Christ. Verse number one starts out, says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, number one, or be troubled neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that as that the day of Christ is at hand. Verse number three says, Let no man deceive you. This is very important. There are many doctrines in the world today. You can, you can decide or choose what you want to believe and you will be able to find somebody that will tell you that that's right. So it's important to understand that although there are many doctrines in the land, although there are a lot of different churches, a lot of a, a multitude of ministries, preachers, and the such, there's only one truth. Everybody say amen to that. I. It don't matter what you call yourself. It doesn't matter what kind of a church you're affiliated with. Uh, I don't care if, if you are Pentecostal, as I am. I've been raised that way all of my life. But not all Pentecostals have the truth. That's right. Not all of them are preaching the truth. As, as it is for any other denomination. But there's only one truth. You cannot have more than one uh, gospel. There's only one gospel. The, the Bible said it, one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. That means there's only one. When it says one Lord, that means there's only one God. Listen to what I'm saying. Now, there are different manifestations of God, but there's only one God, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. There's only one Lord, one faith. There's only one faith. I'm not talking about Pentecostal or Baptist or Methodist or Episcopalian or Catholic or anything else, but there's only one faith, and that is the faith that Jesus himself taught and established while he was still here on the face of this earth. One Lord, one faith, and only one baptism. Mm -hmm. That means there's only one way that you're going to get into the church of God, into the, the kingdom of God, and that is to believe on him, on the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible said if you don't believe in him, you, you don't have any part in him. You must first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So it's important for us to understand that. It said, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except 
there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Now, that scripture says, let nobody deceive you. I don't care if your name is, is uh, what, well, you know, it doesn't matter whether, you, whether you're a, a, a Jimmy Swaggart or a, uh, a, a whoever you might want to uh, use, uh, Joel Osteen or whoever it might be, doesn't make any difference. Uh, don't let anybody deceive you. Uh, don't let them lie to you and convince you otherwise. Uh, for that day shall not come except there come a falling uh, be a falling away first. In order to fall away, you must have first have been a part of something to fall away from it. Uh, there is only one Lord, one faith, and one baptism, but there are many that have departed from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, telling you that you don't have to live this way. You don't have to believe what the Word of God said. Uh, I don't care what, what people or who might tell you otherwise. That's the only way you're going to get in is to come by what the Word of God says. And it doesn't make any difference how many different uh, volumes they print or how many different translations they come up with uh, If uh, according to the word of God the word that God handed down uh, amen a long time ago is the word that you're going to be judged by not by the translation uh, that you read or study but by the word that God handed down and so it said let no man deceive you that day shall not come except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. That man of sin uh, be revealed the son of perdition. Now look at verse number four. This man or this son of perdition it's talking about said he opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God. Did you hear me? Shut above all that is called God, so or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself to be God, that he is God. And uh, like that's what I was t saying there before in verse 3, let no man deceive you. There's going to be people, in fact there have been people uh, over the years that have come out and said, I'm Jesus Christ or I am the Lord or uh, the, one thing or another, you know, I am Jesus incarnate or whatever. Uh, and they've all been hypocrites, they've all been liars don't believe anything they say. The Bible says, if they come to you and tell you, lo, he is in the desert, believe it not. Lo, he's in the secret chambers, believe it not. Why? Because when Jesus returns to this earth, his people, the saints of God, is going to know that he's here. Not somebody's not going to have to tell you he's out here in the desert or he's in the secret chambers because you're in tune with God and you will know when he's here, when he arrives. Amen? And so don't let anybody deceive you. Nobody's got to tell you, hey, Jesus is back. Now you'll know it already. Don't let anybody fool you by any means, it says. Now, verse number five says, Remember ye not, that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. When I was yet with you, I told you to look for these things. I told you to expect this to happen. So it's not a surprise. It's not something new. It's been going on for a long time. When I was with you, I told you these things, and now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. I want to tell you something. The Antichrist is already here. Did you hear me? The Antichrist is already here. He hasn't revealed himself yet. 
And there's a whole lot of speculation goes on. There's a lot of people say, oh, it's it's this one or it's that one. Or, uh, you know, I've heard people say it's it's Barack Obama or it's somebody else. Uh, but uh, he has not revealed himself yet, but he's here. And he's just waiting for the right time, it says. And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. Verse number 7. For the mystery of iniquity. What is iniquity? Sin. The mystery of sin doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Only he who now letteth will let. Who do you suppose that's talking about? I believe it's talking about the Spirit of God is the only thing that's holding back the son of perdition. That's the only thing that's holding back the Antichrist from setting up and announcing who he is and announcing his kingdom and laying claim on this world is the Spirit of God that is in the land today, in the world today. That's the only thing that's holding him back. And when it's gone, look out. Because then the son of perdition is going to be revealed. Now, let's look at verse number 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. All he has to do is speak the word. Praise God. All he has to do is say, Depart from me, ye that worketh and doth iniquity. Depart from me. Get out of you know, when whenever that that the, the devil comes to you, we have the power in the name of Jesus. When the, when the devil comes a-knocking on your door or comes up behind you and tries to spook you or tries to lay some false doctrine on you, all we have to do is use the Word of God and say, Get thee behind me, Satan. Because he knows he cannot withstand the Spirit and the power of God. Amen. Now I said he's going to destroy him with the brightness of his coming. He's going to con whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. He cannot withstand the Lord Jesus Christ. He can Satan knows that he's already been defeated. He knows who his defeater is. And the only thing he's trying to do uh, is get as many people as he possibly can to fall away from God and follow him. Uh, uh, and and uh, he knows that whenever the Lord appears, that's it. It's over. It's done. Now, verse number nine. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, after Satan gets done doing all of his nastiness, when he gets done doing all of the things that he can possibly do, that son of perdition has done all that he can do. Who's uh, it says, and with uh, who, even him who's coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness. In them that perish, because they receive not. Now listen real close. Get your listening ears on. Because they receive not the love of the truth. Say amen. The, they don't want to receive the truth. They're not going to accept the truth. That's why the scripture said that they would heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. They're just going to tell them things they want to hear. You know that nice little doctrine about, uh, oh, uh, as long as you come to my church and pay your tithes to, to my uh, ministry, and as long as you do this and you do that, uh, why, you know... Uh, you're going to be just fine. I'm going to tell you what, you can prosper. They're going to say, oh, all you have to do is just follow me and you can uh, uh, 
prosper. You can have everything that you want. Sure, you can have everything. The, the word of the Lord tells us that, what, not, not Joel Osteen or anybody else, but the word of the Lord says that there is no want, there'll be no want to them that love God. Be no want to them that love the Lord. But not because of what somebody or some other preacher says, because of what the word of God says. And they, they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. For after this cause, God shall send them that did not accept the truth strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Now, that's what's happened to our church world today. There's been so many has fallen away from the truth and given heed to seducing spirits. And God has turned many of them over to a reprobate mind. He has sent them strong delusion, a delusion of thinking, hey, I'm okay. But if your life doesn't match up, doesn't mark up to the word of God, you're not okay. Believe me. Because this is the word that you'll be judged by. Now, verse number 12. That they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. And now, it, the thing that we have to understand is that all of this is taking place ushering in the end of time. All of these things the Bible said was going to happen, was going to take place. Remember what the scripture said about when the armies of the world encompass Jerusalem? And, uh, you know, you, when you see this happening, he said, look up, your redemption draweth nigh. Well, that's what's happening today, folks. This is just another sign of the time that we're living in. All of these things had to happen before that the Lord could come back and take his church out. Why? You say, well, why did it have to happen? Because the word of God said so. That's all the, that's all the reason you need. Because the word of God said it would happen and it has to happen that way. And when all this is done, then the Lord is going to come now look at uh, verse number 15. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, Comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. When it's all said and done, the only thing that matters is are you founded upon the truth? There's only one truth. There's no other way. Jesus said, I am the door. To the sheepfold. Nobody comes in except by me. That's what he said. Until we meet again, God bless you is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.